Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Flatland by Edwin Abbott. This is what the cover looks like. The subtitle is A Romance of Many Dimensions and it is a great shame that this is actually in the storage section of my library and not on the shelves because this was such an enjoyable read. This was written in 1884 so it is a little bit older but it was very interesting, very unique, and very creative and I loved reading this. It's quite a thin volume, under 200 pages, just over 100 pages. So if anything I say in this review sounds interesting, maybe Flatland by Edward Abbott is for you. So let's talk about this book. It is a little bit of an older book, as mentioned, 1884, and this book is written as a fiction. It's written with a narrator, but it's to illustrate a mathematical concept, I guess we could say. And I think it was very interesting and it's still applicable today. I think it's one of those books that maybe wasn't as applicable when it was written as it is today in given scientific advancements in the last century. So in Flatland, we are in the imaginary world of Flatland, the title, which is an entirely 2D land. Its inhabitants um, and the narration is through one of the inhabitants are figures in this 2D landscape. So think of a plane all of them are in that plane. There is no three-dimensional aspect to it, so you are in a plane and you can only see as though you are in this plane. The narrator is a square, and this comes into play because he's going to talk about social hierarchy, um, identification, housing, dangers, genetics, all sorts of aspects of Flatland and the culture in Flatland itself. Then we go through some history that has occurred in Flatland before we get into some maybe weird experiences Square has had. So Square starts by describing how Flatland exists. There is a social hierarchy in Flatland. So in a plane, there can be a wide variety of shapes, but there can be nothing three-dimensional. So no spheres, no pyramids. We have to do things like circles and triangles. Your status in Flatland is determined by the number of edges that you have. So circles are considered priests or things that are near circles. Shapes that have so many edges, like 200 edges, so to be perfect or almost perfectly round holds the highest status in Flatland. The more edges you have, the higher status you have. But also important is the regularity. So you need to be very regular, your sides need to be all the same, otherwise you are irregular and you, are, you can either be attempted to be corrected or you can be, I guess, consumed or uh, basically killed to, because you're going to be a negative on society, basically. Women exist in this plane or in Flatland as lines. So they exist as very thin lines. It's actually very thin, they go into a little bit more detail, very, very thin parallelograms, but essentially lines. And these are quite dangerous to exist because the edges on these shapes are dangerous. So a line can puncture or wound other shapes. So women are perceived as being very dangerous and needing to have special rules to exist in society. At the bottom of the social hierarchy are triangles and these have tasks like being soldiers and they, they're at the bottom. They don't have a lot of status. Now there is some way to move up as you have descendants. They may have more sides than you, meaning that they may occupy a higher status than you. This means that this shape actually holds a higher place in society than you. So instead of having a, as it is in some cultures in the world today, we have the need to recognize and respect elders. It's the other way where the elders respect youngers or uh, those who they, their offspring, I guess, because they've, uh, they have more sides to them. And also that's just the culture. So sorry for the absolutely loud truck that just passed by. My, I, I can't tell traffic to stop <laughs> for my videos. Then having explained the social hierarchy, the narrator goes into how life is in Flatland. How do you identify a shape? So if you're in a plane, everything just looks like lines around you and you have to figure out how you're going to view, when you're viewing other shapes in this plane, how are you going to identify their social status? How are you going to identify a woman? How are you going to identify a circle? How are you going to identify a square? How, how do you identify things when everything is 2D? There's no three dimensional aspect. So you don't have the above the overhead view to say that's a square. You just see lines and edges and you need to look at this and identify how using the information and distance and perspective and also by feeling. So how, if you feel the, the, vert, uh, the vertex of a shape, how do you know what this is? 
The author also takes time to discuss things like housing, how the housing is constructed, different dangers like being hit by a woman. And all of this exists in with little diagrams in the book. It's not, there's not a whole lot of diagrams, but there's many helpful diagrams to explain what you are discussing. When I say there's not a many, I mean there's, there's pages that just don't have any diagrams and you have to understand. But the writing is very clear and you definitely can visualize everything that is being said in this book. There's also social customs like women because they have a lot of sharp edges need to be, uh, they call it the peace cry. So assuming they need to talk all the time so you know where they are. Talking about the, the genetic aspect, how you can have children who are at a higher social status than you. Those sort of aspects are discussed by the narrator or well, Abbott, but written through this idea of a narrator, the square who is talking about his land. They also go through some of the history. So at one point color was introduced and it was quickly realized that when you were in a plane, so when you're in Flatland, which again, the inhabitants of Flatland know no other world. It's like being in the 3D world. We can't think, we, we don't live in a 2D world. We just understand 3D everything. So it's normal to us to think in 3D. So in Flatland, it's very normal to think in two dimensions. It's very normal to be living in this plane. And with the introduction of color, what happened was it was, hard to tell different lines apart because you could use color to obscure your social status or your rank and things would be very difficult to discern. So color after a big hullabaloo was outlawed in Flatland. So after we've gotten through a good portion of the book, where we're just discussing how things exist in Flatland in this two dimensional reality, the narrator discusses a dream that he has. So he, winds up in a place called Lineland and he thinks Lineland is very strange. Lineland is quite literally just a, a one-dimensional line and there's a king of Lineland who exists and he's the longest line and the king of Lineland is trying to talk to our square to explain how his world works and the square doesn't understand it. He doesn't, he can see the 2D in a way that the inhabitants of a line could not see two dimensions. They're just in their one dimension. So when the narrator says, well, you can move side to side instead of just forward and backwards, it is incomprehensible to the inhabitants of Lineland. But then the narrator has his own shock because he's hanging out in his house, bringing in the new century in Flatland with his wife, and he has an encounter with a sphere. Now in a plane, the sphere cannot be visible as a 3D dimension. And said the sphere moves through the plane and it looks like a winding, shrinking circle. Now, this might be a little difficult to imagine, but if you think about a, a plane that goes through a sphere, as the sphere or as the plane moves up and down, or as the sphere moves up and down, that would look different if you were in the plane looking at the edge of the sphere as it passed through the plane. And the sphere that the narrator encounters is trying to explain what 3D, what three-dimensional reality is, and that is as incomprehensible to the narrator as two-dimensional reality or flatland is to the inhabitants of Lineland. And so the sphere is trying to explain this to the narrator who cannot understand what, what a sphere is. He doesn't understand what's being explained to him until the sphere takes him out of flatland and allows him to see flatland or the plane from above. So he's now getting this three-dimensional perspective of this world that he lives in and he is blown away. He, a whole new perspective has been opened up to him. And having been opened up to this perspective, he then starts to ask about higher dimensions. So if this is the three dimensional realm, what about the fourth dimension? And the sphere gets quite upset with this and says, well, that's not, that's theoretically possible, but basically stop asking questions. That's crazy. I don't understand it. So we see the sphere is also bound by his own mental capacity. And this is where it becomes relevant to us because imagining a fourth dimension might be quite difficult to us because we're used to three dimension. It just seems so natural to us that being taken out of that into a fourth dimension would almost be incomprehensible until or unless we experienced it. So he is banished back, he being the narrator, is banished back to Flatland where he tries to campaign for a 3D reality but is seen as a uh, someone who is not right in the mind that this cannot be true and is this, um, given the sentence of life in prison, which is where he supposedly writes this book from. That's the perspective from which he's writing Flatland from. I think that this was a very, very fun thought experiment for the whole book. And this is especially more relevant as 
different mathematical discoveries in the last century have shown that things can work in higher dimensions. There are other dimensions that can be used to solve math problems or can yield correct solutions to math problems. And this is very, very hard to visualize. And I'm not going to sit here and claim that I understand the visualization of other dimensions. That it's as almost inconceivable to me as the inhabitants of Flatland experiencing 3D would be. It's that level of having to think in a different way is really the whole thought experiment. And it was very, very enjoyable to read. I had a great time reading this thought experiment of a 3D world being explained to a member of a two dimensional world. But I also think there's an element of social critique in here. I felt like one thing when you read is you realize that maybe women aren't treated very well or the the way that um, people who are viewed as undesirables, those people, those inhabitants that are not regularly shaped are viewed as undesirable and also viewed as irredeemably flawed and therefore it's better to just kill them than it is to redeem them and or try to make them better in their nature. Basically they were born bad so they cannot be changed to be better and I think those aspects are Abbott taking a little bit of a social critique of the world that he grew up in 1884 was that Victorian times. There was definitely a lot to be critiqued socially in that time. There's always a lot to be critiqued socially in whatever world you live in. But I think there's a little bit of an element of social critique. I would love to read a book that was just explaining that that aspect of Flatland because I felt like the thought experiment of the different dimensions is the part that I understood best from this. But it, the social aspect, the social critique was not lost on me. I think it was very well detailed, but also very well explained. I'm sure my very poor explanation is a bad substitute for just reading this book. So if after hearing me discuss this, you still don't really understand, I would say just read this book. You don't need any special knowledge of mathematics. There's no formulas presented. You can just read this as an average person and understand this. It's very well explained and I think Abbott did a great job writing this. To say that or to go on that point, Abbott actually wasn't really recognized for this writing in his lifetime. He, at least according to the introduction, when he died this book wasn't included on his list of notable works but it's the one that I've only heard of from him so I think it's very interesting how a book became more relevant after he had passed away and I think that may have had to do something with the scientific and mathematic advancements of the last century. I really recommend this book. This was a five-star read and after reading a very horrible collection of romance novellas earlier in the week, reading a five-star book was a real treat and I highly recommend. I recommend this to everyone, not just people who are interested in math, but anyone who thinks that this thought experiment might be a really fun read. Flatland is an excellent book and I'm going to be recommending it to other people to read. If you've read this book or have any thoughts or comments on it, please leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a 